Well, I started cutting this this log last night and I ran out of daylight. But I've got a new strategy here. I put a board on the top and uh, find a, uh, a reference and then I cut along that board. It forces me to keep the chainsaw straight up and down. And then when I hit a knot like this, um, it doesn't push my saw out. I think I'll have a straighter edge and I am freehanding it. So I'm not using a device, and uh, my purpose for that is I can cut in either direction. And it also lets me change the angle of the blade as I'm going just to get through things. So uh, I'm going to try to get this, this end done before the rain comes and uh, dropped off here. Uh, and then I'll uh, from the back, I'm going to try to cut a 6x6 six six out of there. But if I can't get a 6x6, six six, then I'll get a 6x4 six or something like that. Whatever this one ends up being cut, then um, it, the sister, I'll cut one other one for the, so the door frame is framed. I went a little bit longer than 8 foot. I don't need, uh, need uh, I need 8 foot for the log, but I went a little longer. So hopefully that will be the header uh, for above the door. I think this is going to work. Once this is done, then I'll take it over to the sawmill. Um, I've got a little uh, Craftsman bandsaw that will do uh, six inch. So once I have a flat edge there, I believe that I'll be able to put that down on my rollers and roll it through my bandsaw and cut the other four sides uh, square. So totally freehand. Uh, my logs were uh, too twisty. Um, you know, I get one, one side flat and the other side not. Uh, but this this appears to be working out for me best. So hopefully that'll get done and then I'll, I'll document the process for me and start sawing everything that way. All right, Steve, a thousand year home. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. So my goal here is to cut one straight edge off of this log. And then from there, I'm going to quarter it up. So this is uh, screwed down top and bottom. I'm going to keep cutting a little bit on that. When I'm out in the woods, I wear my chaps and all my equipment, but here where I feel like it's controlled, see anywhere there's knots, it still has some wood attached to it. Let's see. All right, well, pretty far. There's the eight foot mark right there. I think I will stop cutting it there and I'll cut that eight foot off because I might change the taper on that last little bit and do something. So I'm almost through this thing. Let's see. Had to quit last night, couldn't see. up here and we'll take a look at the wood. Right. Well that's not half bad, right internet? Let's see, I'll get a tape measure, we'll measure out eight foot. See if I can get an eight foot piece on that. I might even be able to saw that one up on a bandsaw and make some uh, some planks for the horse horses. So some of that end I'm going to have to cut straight, so those will have to be longer than eight foot. Do eight and a half feet. All right, there's nine feet. There's eight and a half feet. We cut it right there. All that good enough. Get 
my drill. Now where it tapers down at the end, I'll end up using that. Uh, to my advantage, I'll taper it down to maybe a 4x4 four four or whatever I need. Again, the structural strength inside there is mostly in the metal. So these are mostly decorative. And they straighten out the they straighten out the the metal walls when I cut a hole in it. Alright. Put a log under there before I cut it. I will. All right. That's not half bad, right, Internet? You all agree? I can get a post out of that, I believe. Man, it's already 90 and it's not even 10 o'clock. All right, well, that's my 15-minute break for work. I got to go back and make some money. But uh, there you go, please. The rain's coming in, so I'm trying to get ahead of that. So the humidity is every bit of 100%. I can really feel it crushing down on me. But I am pretty happy with that. There's a little damage there. But no insects, right? So good deal. All right, well, this is Steve of Thousand Year Homes. And... I'm sharpening up my chainsaw between cuts. Also, you'll see that chain's a little slack. I'll take care of that. So, you know, what's the difference between my YouTube videos on logging and somebody else's? Well, I would say it has everything to do with where I live and uh, the wood that I have. So, uh, I love those YouTube videos where they're up in the Canadian woods and they have 300-year-old trees that they could cut. 52 inch slabs out of I don't have that I have a uh, burned over 15 acres that uh, somebody abandoned 30 or 40 years ago and I have mesquite and juniper on it that's what I have and that's what I'm working for so and I can I'm lucky to cut a 4x4 four four, uh, 8 foot 4x4 four four out of it and uh, or a cedar so uh, so I'm gonna give each one of these three I didn't hit any stones or go through the wood uh, yesterday, so I'm just putting an edge back on to work today. And uh, so I've uh, I figured out how to freehand cut. I'm using a guide board on top that will get nicked by these chains. So, you know, they stick out a little bit from the, from the bar and they, they bite it a little bit. And... Uh, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And see, I start where the the, uh, the link is. So I know where I start. Right there. There's, you notice there's two teeth that are facing the same way. And uh, so now I know I've gone all the way around on them. So I'll tighten up that bar, which is too loose for my taste. Then I'll finish that cut. check the bar oil too and every now and then I take it out and clean it all out make sure the oilers are still working you flip the bar so the bar doesn't get worn on one side you check the bar to make sure it doesn't have any edge and mine doesn't yet and file that edge off if you get it all right and uh, I am finding that I'm getting everything done with these uh, this Roby uh, electric uh, chainsaw so I have five or six of the lithium batteries that I keep charged 
all on solar. I am off grid. And uh, you still need a little bar oil. And so this thing leaks uh, bar oil. I can't just put it anywhere. Got to put it back in its case or else I end up with an oily floor. I don't know. I've, I've, I've always leaked through the through here. I've never really looked at this to see if it's getting a decent seal. Hmm. Something I'll check. Since it leaks, I don't fill it all the way up. I want it to all leak out. Ready to cut some more.